Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, kicking off the pick six on Traverse Saturday with race number six, the grade one eight challenge Jerkin stakes for three-year-old sprinters at seven furlongs. You can bet the card with the DRF Bets account. It's a great deal. Sign up at drf.com forward slash bet and receive 10 times the bonus. You bet 20, you get 200. This is the signature race for three-year-old sprinting on the dirt. And as we take a look at the field, there are two main protagonists. The number one promises fulfilled and the number eight Forense Fire. Let's talk about the second choice first, right. Forense Fire, a horse that we've always liked around one turn, but he was so good and so consistent that you didn't fall chasing service at all for getting a little bit Kentucky Derby crazy <laughs> early this year. Last time out in the Dwyer, he got the cutback he needed, wow. and he dominated. Yeah, that was obviously a huge step forward for this horse when he got the cutback. It's interesting because when you go back to that Kentucky Derby, I agree with you that that's the race that he deserved a chance to run in, even though I feel like everybody kind of knew going in, it really wasn't the right race for him. Um, it's about as good an 11th place finish beating 23 lengths as you will ever see in your life because he actually kept close to a fast pace. He was still in the mix in that race in the upper stretch before he finally got tired. That was an underrated performance. They cut him back last time, Dan. I don't know if he can run that race again, but if he does, I mean, he's a huge player in here. He he traveled so strongly in that race and blew by Mendelssohn off the quarter pole in there to put that race away. It was That was a very impressive win he last night. He broke time. so sharp. I read, let him go. Yep. He sat by himself. He came with this four wide move on the turn and he just swept right by him. Now I have two questions for you. One, that 107 is a pretty big outlier. The yeah. horse has run 11 times. He's yeah, never done true. that before. Do you kind of buy that fig? A and B. You mentioned in the Derby he was close to a fast pace. Yeah. This pace may not be very very fast how is i read riding this horse well he's a see to me this is a very versatile horse i don't think he's going to be compromised by the pace in this race um i think he can, he's going to be able to get a position up close in here and i i think he ran great last time and i have no reason to question that figure that he ran in that race can he run that race again i don't know but i feel like they're finally running him in the right races we already talked about the reasons to stretch him out and it didn't work out for them this is this is he hasn't sprinted actually since he was a two-year-old but th this is the right race run him this is this distance is going to hit him right between the eyes you don't believe the pace will affect forense fire yeah. it could certainly help promises fulfilled the morning line favorite here's the time form u.s pace projector for the h allen jerkins the blue bar indicates that our friends at time form believe that this race will favor horses on or near the early lead and promises fulfilled is likely to make the lead because he is wickedly fast and I love the way he won the Amsterdam the local prep I know it was over a wet track but he broke sharp as he always does and he was able to sit off another horse he yeah. let that horse go he got to the outside and he was never losing yeah I mean I'm with you on that that was a, a, a really convincing thing to see him be able to do because that the other horse in that race was Strike Power a pretty fast horse for Hennig and that horse was intent on making the lead in that race and promise was fulfilled he was fine with that. He just let that horse go, moved to his outside, took over, and just went about his business. A really strong performance. This horse is three for four sprinting in his career. The only loss, the Woody Stevens. He was probably best that day, too, when he got involved in a vicious pace. This race just sets up so perfectly from the rail. It's not supposed to be a problem for him. He breaks, he breaks right, he goes right to the front here. I don't see how they keep up with him early, Dan. Let's talk about some of the other horses now in post position order, beginning with the number two, Telekinesis, who is fifth behind uncoupled stablemate Wonder Godot in the Queen's Plate. He set some legitimate fractions that day in the Queen's Plate. We know what Wonder Godot is capable of. She came back to win as a heavy favorite in the Prince of Wales with a 92, yeah. and will run in the Travers later in the card. This horse has really done some good work on dirt, and I know you like the cutback is he just going to get outrun turning back in this yeah race? it feels like the pace scenario might really work against him here as he turns back and he's got some natural speed but i don't know if he has sprint speed especially with promises fulfilled in here but you know what this horse is very lightly raced they've treated him like a good horse right from the start i like him cutting back in this race i understand you know uh, Cassie took him up to Canada to run in the big races for three-year-old Canadian breads. I think he thinks highly of this horse. That's why he ran him there. This cutback, I think, is a good thing for him, and he's got upside. This is a question that might sound a little bit silly. The number three engage has run seven times. He has never been out of the exacta, but would you call him a bit of an underachiever? <laughs> um, I don't want to call him an underachiever. 
only because or overhyped. only because I've never really liked him. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I just don't really think he's that good. We'll see what happens. He ran fine last time, only second best to promises fulfilled. He ran fine in the Woody Stevens, only second best in a race that really set up well for him. Um, I don't know. I think he's good, Dan. I just I'm not a big fan of his, and he's one of the horses in there. He probably takes some money again. I'm gonna try and beat this horse. Four to one on the morning line for the Keeneland Grad. I'll be ridden by Jose Ortiz. I like him a little bit more than you. Again, no matches for promises fulfilled. He got a nice trip uh, from Jose. The old in out had a three yeah. wide shot at it turning into the stretch, and for the second race in a row, only second best. But he has done his best running second off the layoff or second lifetime start. Maybe we get a forward move. I just hate the fact that there's a good chance that he might be the one having to push promises mm. fulfilled early. The four is give me a minute, and like telekinesis, he's turning back in distance, and I think this is what he wants to do. That's I think it. he's a late running sprinter. The problem is, I wonder if the ship's already sailed after 12 starts and only one win, that being at 1 to 20 against Luis. Yeah. Louisiana <laughs> bread made in special weights, and B, there's just no pace. Yeah, all those things are true. I mean, I, I really like them pointing to a shorter race for him. I think sprinting's probably what he wants to do, but, you know, what's this obsession with continuing to run this horse in graded stakes races? They need to get him some races that he can actually be competitive in. I was so confident that Seven Trumpets would beat Mendelssohn in the grade three Dwyer. I picked him that day. I was very confident. It's begun a string of frustrating seconds that's yeah. just gone on and on for almost two months now. He ran fine. He ran probably the best race that he's ever mm -hmm. run and the best race that maybe he has in him, and he still was nine lengths in arrears of Firenze Fire. Is there any reason to believe that he can turn the tables. Is the cutback in distance going to help him? I think it will. Yeah, maybe going seven's a little better than six, but it has to help him more than just a little bit in this race. I and mean, he's facing two two horses who are coming out of races that this horse just cannot run. Fascinating entrant in the race is the six could yeah. do. Going out for Todd Pletcher. This is a son of the great turf horse, Frankel, who is trying dirt for the first time. Now, he showed runoff speed in the Hall of Fame last sure time out. He has turf speed. He has turf sprint speed. I'm not sure if that's promises fulfilled dirt sprint speed, right. but maybe he has enough speed to keep promises fulfilled busy. Looking at the pedigree underneath the dam was a half to Zoftig, who was a grade one stakes winner on dirt at the yeah. old Woodbine. Right. Uh, Gidu is a half to Marlboro, who's a graded stakes winner on synth. So a little bit of dirt pedigree. Interesting that Todd has him here. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, it, he adds a little intrigue to the race, uh, whether you like him or not in this race. I feel like it's going to be very hard for him to run his best race on the main track, especially when he gets out sprinted to the lead by Promises Fulfilled. Um, but this horse, he's shown some ability from day one. He ran a really underrated race last time over that yielding turf. I mean, he went a wicked pace in that race. He actually ran great last time. Still having fun, had all the best of it in the Woody Stevens. He beat three of these horses, but you could argue he might not have run the first or second best race in mm -hmm. the Woody Stevens. I mean, they just went 43 and three. He hung back near the rear of the field, yeah. and he's a pretty good horse, and he came with a good run, and he got him. If you believe the pace projector here, it's a 180 degree yeah. different scenario. I think he's a likable horse, but I think he needs that hot pace. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, he is a really good horse um, and he's another one who benefits from these shorter sprint distances but I mean that race basically was handed to him last time not taking anything away from him he made the run that he made in there and he got the job done but they set the table for him and he came into the stretch and he sat down and he ate in there this is a totally different scenario I just don't see how it sets up that well for him to me he was the kind of horse I think he's gonna run well in here I think he's the horse to be against this time funny duck the number nine the last time he ran one turn was when he pulled off a 40 to 1 upset in the Pat Day mile mm -hmm. over a sloppy track when he received a really shrewd ride from Brian Hernandez saving ground and he was in tight along the rail he and he's still just shot on through and was able to win. I'm not sure what I think of that sloppy track performance far and away better figure than anything else he's ever right. earned. Another horse that might be at the mercy of a, a pace situation, but he's a giant price. Yeah, I'm not going to knock him too hard. Cutting back is probably the right thing for him. The, the Pat Day Mile such a tough race to evaluate. So many no-shows yeah. in there. He wasn't one of those, and he got the job done at a big price. This is a tougher spot. Let's take a look at our top selections for the Grade 1 H. Allen Jerkins. Kicking off the pick six at Saratoga on Saturday. Way the horse to beats the number one promises fulfilled. You're going with him on top, gate to wire. Yeah, I just feel like this is a great situation for him, and he was so good last time that if he just shows up and runs that race back, this time, if he just makes the lead, he's going to be tough to run down. You're going 1-8-2-6. and six. I wonder if Firenze Fire is going to try to attack this source early It'll and Brad Ortiz and not want to let him get too close. And maybe Engage will sort of sit in the catbird seat for Chad Brown, second off the layoff. Uh, like you, I'm not completely enamored with him. He's 4-1. to one. That's really not a great price. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping he drifts a bit if the 1 and the 8 take all the money in here. Small stab with Engage. Got to use a lot of promises fulfilled in Firenze Fire. I'm going 3 one eight seven. 
in the grade one Alan Jerkins. Remember, sign up to DRF Bets. You get a big bonus deal. Ten times the sign up bonus at drf.com forward slash bet. Approximate post time for the grade one H. Alan Jerkins, 223 Eastern on Saturday. Best of luck.